hail his grace, Aemon of the House Targaryen, first of his name, King of the Andals, the Rhoyna, and the First Men, Lord of the Seven Kingdoms, and Protector of Realm and Faith. Welcome back everyone to Mount and Blade Warband as the Faith Militant. I hope you enjoyed the coronation ceremony that we had for our king, Aemon I. Uh, it took quite a while to make actually because I had to make sure that we have all of our Kingsguard in there. We have the members of the Council of the Most Devout, the High Sparrow, as well as uh, our warrior sons, Bonifer and uh, Sir Lancel. Uh, but overall, I think it, uh, it actually looked very nice. So let me know what you think. Uh, I hope that you have enjoyed, as I said. Now today uh, is going to be a little bit of a council episode because we haven't really talked about many things uh, lately. So we definitely have some catching up to do. But before we look at the greater, I guess, situation, uh, I think we should check out our party. And first, I would like to talk to our king, Aemon I, who is now wearing his crown. And this is actually what I want to talk about right now because I have basically two crowns you can choose from. Um, first of all, you have the crown that you've already seen in the coronation uh, ceremony. Um, it's, uh, it's a solid, well, solid with crown, giving 45 protection to your head. Um, and it has like this kind of open, open feeling, I guess. Uh, then you also have the possibility to go with the crowned great helmet, which is basically the same helmet that you have, uh, that you've have had this entire time, except that, you know, now has a crown on top. It also gives a little bit more protection than this one. Um, so I, I suppose you, you want me to go with this one, but, um, I don't know. Simply let me know in the comment section which one you prefer, which of the two crowns, but you can certainly no longer ride around with that great helmet. It, it wouldn't fit uh, now that you have officially crowned. Uh, I think, however, I'm actually going to go with this one for now. Um, well, I can't decide. I personally can't decide. You let me know in the comment section. I think I'm just going to leave it at this for now. Okay, now we also need to talk about your skills because you did level up during the Siege of King's Landing. Remember, it was the king himself who actually led the assault of King's Landing. He was protected by his King's Guard, but in the end, he was actually knocked out by some uh, some peasants. But I think that the peasants now understand that we're only here to to liberate them, uh, to free them from the, uh, from the northern savages that have occupied the city for so long and actually destroyed the Great Sept of Baelor. Um, but anyways, uh, I think I'm going to give you a little bit more intelligence and I will increase your... I think I'm going to increase your trainer and your tactics because I do mean to make your lord at some point. Not right now because there's still something I want to do. Um, but yeah, that will definitely help you. You obviously let me know if you want me to uh, educate your character in a certain way. If you want to have more Iron Flash or whatever, just let me know. Uh, as, as well as the uh, weapon proficiencies. I think I'm just going to... Uh, increase your actually pole arms probably much better. Yeah, a little bit of two-handed although you don't actually have a two-handed weapon yet But that might change anyway, uh, that's that's that uh, the king Let's now go uh, and talk to the Lord Commander of the King's Guard, Sir Jonathan um, he has done an exceptional job during the Siege of King's Landing and um, He also leveled up now. I could give you a little bit more strength agility Mm, you've got a lot of trainer, riding athletics, shield. Okay. Hmm. I actually think I'm going to give you a little bit more strength. Probably. Yeah, I'll give you a little bit more strength. And then we could give you athletics or trainer. Leadership. Hmm. I think leadership one is fine for now. I think I'm actually going to give you a little bit more athletics. Just so that you can keep up with the king. Because the king is pretty fast. He's pretty fast. Okay, and I'll probably give you a little bit more one happen. Uh, yeah, one handed weapon proficiency. Awesome. Well, and then we have got to talk to Sir Marlon Sunderland. That's right, he was the squire of our Lord Commander, Sir Jonathan, but he did so well during the Siege of King's Landing, and obviously previously as well, that he earned his knighthood here and there. Um, or, or right, I, I guess right here uh, at the Battle of King's Landing. And so he's now known as Sir Marlon Sunderland. 
and he's obviously now become an official member of the King's Guard. He's the third King's Guard after Sir Jonathan and Sir Brendan Corbury, the White Raven. He's now the third member of Aemon's King's Guard, and so we obviously need to give him his proper King's Guard equipment. So yeah, let's give you the King's Guard helmet and also switch out your armor. That is that is not great indeed. Okay, very nice. Your shoes are already better than what we have okay so this looks pretty good um your horse is very nice as well you've got shield and uh, a lance as well okay perfect but we also need to talk about your skills because you level up as well sir marlin and i mean yeah your iron flesh and power strike is already really really good maybe some more pathfinding first aid i don't you know what i think i'm also gonna increase your strength like, yeah, I'm actually going to increase your strength and we'll give you, hmm, pathfinding. Hmm, I don't know what I was going with or going for with this guy, but I guess, hmm, I guess we'll give you a little bit more pathfinding. Yeah, because why not? And then we'll increase your one-handed strength and maybe two-handed a little bit as well. Okay, perfect. So that's all the upgrades that we needed to do. Septon Tier is still uh, healing up, but he certainly made sure not to miss the king's, uh, the king's ceremony, coronation ceremony. All of the uh, all of the members of the uh, council of the most devout were in fact present. Um, so that's that's very nice. Even uh, you know Septon Ben, Septon Unella that we don't really hear of often because they're obviously not fighting in the wars. They are basically just there to protect our men and to nurture them back after they're wounded. Anyway, enough talk. We have uh, checked our party. We have still a huge army amassed. We have. Uh, yeah, all of our men with us. And we're, we're going to put them to good use. Uh, I think the Garrison King's Landing is fine. Uh, we actually have a few gold cloaks, if I can check this out here. Yeah, we've got some gold cloak archers and glaive men. And so I, I really like that. I like that you have this kind of unique, um, these unique units for uh, King's Landing only. Uh, it really fits quite well. Anyway, so with that done i think we should now have a look at the uh, at the situation in general so let's check out the faction reports and we'll of course check out our own faction for now the faith militant now we have we're basically at war with four different factions we're at war with the north and the riverlands rob stark who's calling himself a uh, king of the north or in the north and of the trident then we're also at war with uh, aegon uh, Targaryen and uh, his supporters in Dawn. We're also at war with the Wildlings uh, and their King Beyond the Wall Mads Raider and we're also at war with the Iron Islands under their so-called King Balon Greyjoy. At least I think yeah it's still Balon. Awesome. So yeah those are the four kind of factions that we're at war with but we're also allied to a few factions. We're allied to the Vale uh, or I guess they are uh, they've been the knee to uh, to Aemon Targaryen, as well as the Three Sisters. They're technically part of the Vale, but they're a little bit special. And they have made some significant gains in the North. So let's quickly check this out. Um, we personally control most of the Crown Lands here. We have Lord Lodge and Duskendale, uh, Kevin Lance and Maidenpool and Derry. We've got our Lord Paramount, Peter Baelish. He's ruling over a lot of the, uh, of the Riverlands. And uh, then we still hold Riverrun and Raventree Hall. We haven't officially given out these castles to anyone just yet. And we shouldn't forget about Baron Perrin ruling uh, the Claw Isle here. He was our first lord. So, uh, you know, he's certainly very important. Anyway, so uh, the situation in the north is the following. Um, the, the, well, the wall has fallen to the Free Folk. And the Free Folk have, and I keep saying Free Folk, of course, they're the Wildlings. Uh, they have uh, conquered most of the north. They hold about, I would say they hold hmm, maybe two thirds. Uh, at least. They even have Bear Island. Now, the North itself uh, doesn't actually have a whole lot of control. Uh, they hold Deepwood Moth, House Glover, still in control. Um, then we also have Moat Caitlin, still held by the Northerners. Obviously, this fortress is probably the last thing that's going to fall, simply because it's so defensible. Uh, but it's more defensible from the South than from the North. That's something that we definitely need to keep in mind. And uh, this is something that I basically completely forgot, but Cape Kraken and Flint's Finger are also still uh, under control of the Northerners. Um, so I guess that's because, you know, it's very difficult to navigate through the neck. Um, and I guess Greywater Watch is still uh, held by the Reeds as well, but there's no, there's no point in trying to find that castle. 
it's simply not possible. So, you know, that's that's one problem. But yeah, the um, the three sisters, or the, the sister lords and the House Sunderland have managed to conquer about a third of the north, uh, I would say. They have taken uh, Old Castle, Hornwood, and Widow's Watch, as well as Ramsgate. So they have a really strong grip over these provinces. They do not have White Harbor. This is still controlled by the Free Folk, and that is problematic. Uh, and they also have Baroten, as well as a few other provinces, and maybe the most prestigious castle in the north, Winterfell. Is also, uh, it's actually initially been taken by the Free Folk, but now under control of, uh, of the Three Sisters, and therefore uh, Winterfell belongs to uh, our own faction. Now, what is the problem about the situation right now? The problem is that White Harbor is held by enemies, the Free Folk, and Moat Kaelin's also held by enemies, so there's no real way for us to get into the north to conquer it. We would have to, if we want to go through the neck, the land way, we'd have to first fight our way through the crossing, mostly, and then we would have to walk through the neck, we would have huge amounts of attrition there, and then we would have to assault Moat Kaelin from the wrong side. So it would be really, really costly to attack. Um, on the other side, we would have to sail, uh, set sail from King's Landing, uh, surround the Vale, uh, maybe stop by its sister tent, and then attack White Harbor from the sea. Also not something, you know, that is really, that's really great. Uh, we would lose a lot of men um, during the uh, naval assault, so I don't know what we should do. Maybe we should leave the North alone for now, or maybe we should wait for the Lords of the Sisters to take White Harbor. That would be ideal. But we'll, we'll talk about that a little bit later. Um, in the Riverlands, as I said, we have most of the Riverlands under control. There's only a few castles left. And, um, yeah, well, uh, that is... Well, that's actually wrong. There's a few castles left in the Riverlands, but the Riverland Lords themselves, they still hold significant strength here in the Westerlands and even in the Reach. So even if we take over these castles here, they're still not completely gone. Um, and I've been thinking about if there is a way for us to maybe sue for peace with any of the factions that we are at war with. Now, the Iron Islands, we're not going to be able to sue for peace. It's not the Ironborn way, and we will not sue for peace with infidels. They are believing in their, in their drowned god, and that is, that is simply impossible to, uh, you know, for the faith militant to... to uh, sue for peace with them, even if they were to convert. I think because of their ironborn culture that is so ingrained in in these people, it, it's it's not possible. Now the northerners, I could I could sort of see the northerners convert and thus get back uh, into the king's protection, but I think the Starks, especially Rob, is way too honorable uh, to leave, maybe honorable and stubborn, uh, to leave their old gods behind. And I think that... Uh, the river lords are going to follow their, their king of the trident. So there's no way we're going to make peace with the Ironborn. There's no way we're going to make peace with the North or the Riverlands. And there's also quite likely no no way we're going to make peace with the, uh, well, with the uh, Wildlings. Um, because if you remember, our council, the Council of the Most Vow, ordered uh, to cut down the tree in Raven Tree Hall, the Weirwood Tree. And that angered all of the followers of the old gods. And as we know, the free folk is not known to bend their knees to uh, to a king. And they're certainly not going to abandon their savage ways. So no peace with them. And then the only other faction we could potentially make peace with is Aegon uh, of House Targaryen, or so he says, and Dawn. And obviously, it's unlikely that they're going to drop their claims because if Aegon was truly a Targaryen, he would have a stronger claim than Aemon. So it's unlikely from their perspective to, to sue for peace. Um, so why I'm saying this? I'm saying this because, well, it means that all of the factions we're at war with, we're simply going to have to defeat. There's no way we're going we're gonna to be able to, you know, convince them to join us like we did with the Vale. Uh, but here's one faction that we are not at war with yet, although I said we might be as soon as we take King's Landing, and that is Renly. Renly is calling himself King of the Seven Kingdoms, just like Aemon. Um, but I think that Renly is able or willing to maybe cooperate, maybe, if not surrender, at least have a ceasefire. And I think the ceasefire could 
do well for us as well. So basically, here's my question to you. After this long talk, here's my question to you. What should we do with the Stormlands and I guess uh, by extension the Reach, although there's not much left of the Reach? Should we declare war on them? Uh, do you think that makes sense from a, I guess, roleplay perspective um, for us to declare war? I mean, we're currently busy with many other factions. Or should we let the Stormlands, you know, just stay, <laughs> stay around for now? And let them hold off Dawn. I don't think they're going to be able to stand against them, but they could buy us time uh, so that we can maybe defeat one of our other many enemies. Um, and I guess that also uh, kind of goes into my next question. What should we do? Uh, I said that we're going to have one siege today, and that siege will be Stone Edge. I want to bring House Bracken to heal. And once we've done that, what should we do afterwards? Um, we've got several options. First of all... Um, we could, we could take the crossing, as I said. We could also try and take Mo Mo Kaelin, maybe White Harbor, some way, find some way into the north. Maybe take uh, Flint's Finger. There is a port off, there's a port here. Maybe we'll sail around and then attack. After all, the rails are under our control. This would be one way into the north. We could do that. And then basically uh, finish off like House Glover and, uh, you know, all the other remnants of the actual northerners. And then kill off the wildlings and maybe reestablish the Night's Watch. That's one thing that we could do. Um, secondly, we could obviously invade the Ironborn uh, and uh, take over the Iron Islands as well as all of their holdings, Lannisport for example, uh, for example, and other things that they hold in the West. Or the third option, we could try and help out Renly in the Reach by declaring war or by actually focusing our war efforts on Aegon Targaryen. Now the reason I'm bringing this up is because Aegon holds a very important relic. Aegon has the Targaryen, the Valyrian Steel Sword, the Ancestral Valyrian Steel Sword of House Targaryen. He has Blackfire. And I think that our King Aemon would be very interested in having this sword himself. And of course, uh, having the sword would give him legitimacy. And it would be really nice if our king could duel the other Targaryen pretender and therefore show uh, that he is the rightful king uh, in the gods or in the, in the eyes of the of the seven gods of Westeros. So um, once again, what should we do next? Should we try and take on the wildlings in the north? Should we destroy the Ironborn, or should we try and uh, and maybe get a duel uh, between uh, Aegon and Aemon? and take the Ancestral Villain Steel Sword Blackfire from uh, this Targaryen pretender here. Let me know what we do, and um, I guess, yeah, let me know in the comment section. And now I'm going to prepare our army to attack Stonehenge. So on our way to Stonehenge, we received messages, uh, one from Raventree Hall that they're attacked by the Ironborn, and the other from Rosby that they're on attack from Sir Quincy Cox of the Riverlands. And now I was heading back to Rosby to defend our castle there, and on the way I chanced upon Lord Jason Malister, and he seems to like us quite a bit. So I wonder, maybe there is a way for us to convince him to join us. That would be amazing. The Malisters are known as Honorable Knights. Uh, there are followers of the Fave the Seven, so I could see them uh, come back under the King's protection should they decide to join us. So I suppose... Yeah, we'll first of all formally introduce ourselves. Yes, your Lord of Tumbleton. Interesting. I, ah, you know what? That means you're probably not going to join us. Hmm. Well, you know what? Uh, let's see. Maybe. Uh, l let's uh, discuss something in, in private. What do you think in general terms about kings, lords, and politics? Kingship and lordship have been instituted to keep the peace and prevent the war of all against all. Yet that must not blind us to the possibility of injustice. Hmm, how do you feel about Sir Edmund Tully? Uh, long may he live. Well, that won't, uh, that won't help you much. Okay, well, in that case, you will have to surrender. We brought our entire army with us. Um, although I'm not sure if all of them joined. 417 men? I guess we'll find out. We'll lead our men, uh, yeah, in this uh, field battle. Might be that it's night time. Mm, no, it actually looks pretty good. Okay, well, let's get our uh, let's get our pool fellows set up and uh, our archers behind. How many men have we brought? Only a few pool fellows. Oh, we have quite a few main sentinels here. Not sure if that's so good. Uh, there's the king, yeah, with his new crown, and you can see the the proud 
the proud Targaryen banners. Okay, now let's actually get in front of our archers. I suppose our enemies are. Yeah, they're uh, they're coming at us now. They're horsemen. Okay, how about you guys form a shield wall? I would feel a little bit more comfortable. Okay, so they're uh, they're just scouting. Let's have our archers hold their fire for now, and maybe come up a little bit closer, and our infantry can move up as well. Maybe take the uh, take the top of the hill here. That'd be best. Yeah, Septon here, you go ahead and do this. And lead your men. You lead from the back. Yeah, I've seen that. Uh, I've seen that several times now. Septentio likes to lead from behind, which is fine. That's perfectly fine. That's his uh, his style of leadership. Um, I, um, me and Sir Theo, then we obviously like to lead from the front. Uh, but that costs us. Uh, that costs Sir, Th Sir Theo then his life, and uh, well, we also took already quite a few wounds. Okay, yeah, Septonella, you definitely need to hold back. All right, now let's have our archers come a little bit closer as well. So I can see our enemies uh, over here. We'll send up our maiden sentinels and of course our poor fellows as well. In fact, I'll probably send my poor fellows further. Uh, we just gotta be careful that we're not gonna that we're not getting shot here. Okay, maiden sentinels, you sit up here, poor fellows. I would like you to, yeah, go over there. I think that's the best spot for you. And then, hmm. Yeah, we'll have to wait. We'll have to wait for infantry before we can really do much. Alright. Yeah, get set up, get set up, man. Ah, Septon Robin already uh, leading his men. And he hasn't taken out his bow yet. Oh, right, I know why. Because we haven't... We didn't tell them yet to fire uh, on their... Uh, fire at will, I guess. That's very important. We'll try and kind of get around here while our infantry is slowly setting up. Uh, there's only the king following us. Uh, where is uh, where's the king's guard? A little bit uh, annoyed at them right now. Maybe we need to uh, bring up our archers a little bit just so that our men are no longer stuck. Oh, and there comes the charge. All right, while I was watching. Okay, well, we'll have stranger servants charge in. We'll try and charge in as well. Maybe take out their men. And our infantry can charge in. I think, yeah. We'll have you charge in. Oh, nice. Okay, and uh, Eamon was knocked out. Uh, oh, well. Oh, well. What is uh, what is with the King's Guard? Why are you not uh, charging in? It's a little bit uh, strange. I wanted you to follow me. Mm. This isn't exactly going well. But we've got a few more enemies. Have you follow me? Don't want you to charge in. Bring the archers maybe a little bit closer. Ah, uh, three kings got, and you managed to uh, get your king knocked out. Well, I, I suppose maybe it's uh, because Aemon was still quite wounded from uh, when he led that siege. That's very possible. Uh, well, uh, certainly that must be the reason. Okay, well, our uh, poor fellows are doing a really good job, uh, and I, I think so are our maiden sentinels. Very nice. Okay, well, you know what? I'll have the king's guard simply charge in. You can do your your own thing. And we'll try and finish this off. Maybe we'll uh, personally take care of you. I saw Sir Brendan getting a kill here. Very nice, very nice. Okay, yeah, you're doing your thing. That's fine. Okay, there's more, more infantry coming. Maybe I just need to be brought even closer help out oh, very nice very nice okay more enemies arriving I actually want the King's got following me instead no you know what I want you to follow me okay because we're being decimated um let's bring you back and have maybe our infantry back as well yeah and my horse is almost dead okay archers Get back on a more defensible position. Maybe up here. And infantry, I want you here. Because we're being overwhelmed. We get reinforcements now, which is nice. And, uh... So, Vlad, maybe you want to follow me as well. Can we save him? Ah, uh, wow, he's a... Wow, he's a vicious fighter. Can he do this? 
to try and help out Sir Fled, but wow, he is amazing. Come on, you can do it. One against three. Well, I am... Ah, uh, he was taken out. Oh, well. All right. Well, there's not much we can do right now. Um, I have to retreat. Ah, my horse is almost dead, though. Mm. And what is... Uh, what's Sir Jonathan doing right there? On his own. Okay, we'll have to leave our horse behind. Simply not much we can do right now. And we'll have to... We'll have to send up... Send our archers back. Not really in the best position right now. Yeah, they're being shot. We're being flanked by uh, by the enemies there. Okay, I'll take you guys out. Poor peasant. Alright. You are not running. Or maybe you are. Alright. Where are our reinforcements? They take their sweet time, that's for sure. That is for sure. Ah, maybe I can take you out. Ah, very nice. Okay. Are you guys getting ready? Where is our infantry? Infantry set up. Set up here. I love that. Wait. Oh, right. Yeah, we've got a few archers that are uh, out of ammo. And uh, they are being added to the infantry group. Okay. Infantry, charge. Charge in. Charge in. And we'll, uh, we'll help you out. They have basically... 28 men left. I think that's the last men they've got left. Um, and yeah, our archers can come a little bit closer as well. And I guess we'll have the King's Guard charge in. And do your thing. Do your thing, Sir Jonathan. Do your thing. Look behind you, or maybe don't, if that makes it easier for me to kill you. <sighs> okay, so how many have you got left? Uh, I guess we'll have our Maiden Sentinels charge in, and uh, we'll quickly finish off this, or maybe we want to watch our little commander do a little bit more damage there. I'm not sure, he's not really utilizing his horse all that well, but he's getting the kills. Ah, uh, you sir, you will be taken out. You better watch it. Oh, now he's running. Oh, you better run. Sadly, he's uh, much faster than we are. Okay, I'll let you run. For now. But you won't be able to escape that easily. You fool. Taking out your crossbow in close combat. You are quick. You know what? I, I have enough of this. Alright. Little commander took him out. Very nice, very nice. <sighs> Alright, let's leave this. Let's see. Um, we've only took three dead. I guess that isn't too bad. That isn't too bad. But a lot of wounds, of course. And our allies also lost quite a few men. Um, 16 kills for Sir Bonifer. 10 for Septon Robin. Pretty amazing. Yeah, I gotta say. Uh, Sir Flat with four kills. I wish we could have uh, helped him out a little bit more. Um, that was unfortunate. And Sir Jonathan with five kills. Corbry with three. And even Sir Marlin got a kill. Very nice, but unfortunately Jason managed to escape. Mm, not sure if I really want to grab any more of those men. Probably, maybe a few men at arms, maybe a raider horseman. Yeah, that's fine. Anything important here? Not really. Uh, yeah, um, I'm actually let uh, let my companions pick this up. Okay. Now Rusby's under siege, and so. So is Raven Tree Hall. Hmm. Not sure if we're going to be able to s protect both, but I guess we'll make our way to Rosby first since we're closer. And that started, the Siege of Rosby started first. Let's, uh. Oh, there's a lot of Storm Lords. I do not want to ransom this guy. Certainly not. Ooh, who's over here? That is a Targaryen caravan. Okay, it's just a caravan. Well, we're not participating in raids or anything. That is certainly not the our way. Okay, this is. Oh. This is a single lord over here. Is he going to escape us? Well, he better not. Okay, so we caught him. Very nice. And we've got Baron Capar and Lord joining us. We'll defeat you as well. Unless, of course, you would like to join us. Um, 
Yeah, what do you think? Uh, well, you should keep faith with your promises and not do injustice to others. Sometimes it's hard to balance those. Stick with people you trust, and it's hard to go far wrong. If you wish to speak of anything else, well, how do you feel about Sir Edmund Tully? Long may he live. Ah, uh, alright, fine. Well, in that case, you will have to surrender as well, and we'll defeat your forces too. Alright, uh, it seems like they're going to charge. They're actually coming right at us. They're going to charge. Interesting. I would not have expected them to do this. But yeah, they're taking out quite a few of our men. Alright. And, uh, okay, our poor fellows just, uh, just attack. Wow, I wasn't actually expecting them to attack us. Um, whew, okay. That's something we're gonna have to deal with for now. I actually would not have guessed they would be so bold to do this. But I think we're slowly cutting them down. We stopped their initial charge and, um... That's all that matters. We've got peasants fighting knights. Oh well. If there are enough of them, they can even overwhelm the king. So you know what? That's that's okay. Actually, I'll have the poor fellas kind of hold here. Maybe even form a shield wall. Get together. I don't know how many enemies we still face. There seems to be one person. Okay, he's been taken care of now. Uh, maybe this guy needs to be dealt with as well. I'll do it swiftly. Okay, maybe I failed, which is fine. All right, very nice. All right, infantry, infantry, charge in, charge in. Okay, very nice. And then, hmm, maybe we just kind of harass them with the king's guard. Okay, one strike of our sword is apparently sufficient to deal with these guys. So, Fled, you can simply do your thing, charge in. Do they have any archers? Probably a few. Okay, we need to make our archers move up as well. To give our men fire support. Okay, there's someone trying to escape. Don't think the peasant's going to be able to deal with him. Ah, uh, well, that's what I thought. Okay, very nice. Okay, so our, our archers are coming. Set them up here. And our infantry maybe here. Yeah, archers. Maybe take the little elevated position here. That looks pretty good. Alright, sweet. Okay, and our infantry is going to set up here. We don't really have a whole lot of poor fellows left, to be honest. Okay, infantry charge. Okay, now archers are set up. Very nice, very nice. Where's the king? King is still around. New enemies have arrived. And what's the little commander doing? Seems to be in trouble. Okay, they don't seem to be able to stand a chance. So how many men have they got left? 29. Don't think that's the last men they have. Okay, let's bring our archers over here. We'll quickly deal with you. Uh, so far, we have not taken any wood. Neither uh, our horse nor uh, Sir Bonifer. It's actually kind of cool. Ah, oh, you bastards. Alright. We'll have the King's Guard probably just charge in at this point. Because there's not really that many men left. I think we can safely do that. And I want my archers yeah, to go over here, maybe. Alright. Yeah, that looks pretty good. Oh, maybe he needs to be dealt with. Alright, very nice. We've got uh, some reinforcements now as well. Definitely tell our people to continue the charge. But I want my Maiden Sentinel set up here. So, how many men have we got left? Okay, let's bring the King's Guard back. Bring the King's Guard. Because I think, that, yeah, the King's actually exposed over there. Not good. Right, how many have we got left? I think Sir Marlin went down. Alright. That's okay. Uh, I think what we'll do, uh, as long as we're a horse, we'll try and take out these crossbowmen. Because they could harass us quite a bit. If our men get to... get to do this safely. 
very nice. Okay, King's God, do your thing. You can do this on your own. Hopefully. Uh, maybe that wasn't the best decision, because they're not really focusing on the crossbowmen like I wanted them. Stop shooting me. Uh, oh well. Okay, archers, I need you over here. How's it looking? 34 enemies left. Not too bad. Not too bad. Alright. King's got on me. I don't know how many of them are still a horse. But I would like you to join me here. I only see the king. Ah, well, the king's god. Sir Jonathan getting more kills. Sweet. Alright, you just stop attacking, really. That's all I want you to do. Maybe this isn't this is a bad idea. Wow. But the king is cutting them down, for sure. Stupid crossbowman. Alright, I think we've got it. Don't let him escape! <sighs> Alright, we've done it. Whew. So we lost one elite Westerland Longbowman, but that's not too bad. That's really not too bad. Um, yeah, awesome. Now, who got the most kills this time? Sir Bonifo with 16 kills. The King with 8. Sir Flat with 9. Septon Robin with 6. And Sir Jonathan as well. And Sir Bryn and Corpory got two kills. Sir Marlin didn't get anything. Um, but that's okay. Uh, he's the newest uh, member of the King's Guard. So that's not really a surprise. Three men left. I'm actually going to have my men uh, just attack them. And of course we lost someone. Ugh. Anyway, that's fine. Sir Quincy Cox, you will be my prisoner. I would have loved to uh, have you join us. But, um, well, you refused. So there you go. I um, guess I'm going to release one of you. Okay, uh, anything important here? Not really. So I did say we're going to have a siege, but unfortunately that was really possible because we were being attacked. I think we're going to make our way now to Raventree Hall and uh, defend this castle for now. And then we'll have to see what we do next. Now, there's going to be a straw poll. I want your guys input on a few things. I've mentioned this before, but I will uh, summarize it once again. The thing that we're really going to have to decide today is our relations with Renly. I think that Renly, it would make sense for Renly to maybe agree to uh, to a non-aggression pact so far because, or, or, you know, right now, because they are under a heavy fire, um, you know, uh, with Dawn and the and House Targaryen. They, they're really busy uh, fighting them right now. So I don't think they have much interest in fighting us right now as, uh, you know, as well. And, you know, kind of the same deal for us. Uh, we don't really have a big problem with Renly since, you know, him and his lords are mostly Faith and the, faith the Seveners. Um, but we have big problems with the Northerners, the, the Wildlings, uh, and with the Ironborn. So uh, maybe this this kind of non-aggression pact could continue for a little bit longer. But I want to know what you guys think. And this is also going to determine what we do next. Because, uh, as I said, there's three options of things that we can do. Maybe take Blackfire from House Targaryen to increase the legitimacy of our king. Um, take the north and free it from the wildlings. Or attack uh, the Iron Islands to uh, rid them of the uh, Drowned God Plague. But if we were to go to war with Renly... Maybe we want to go after a few other things. So please let me know. As I said, there's going to be a uh, straw poll popping up here right now. Definitely um, participate. And also let me know in the comment section what you think. That was it for today. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you have enjoyed. And yeah, I'll see you guys next time.